It's a good one. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. Hey. Let me get everybody up on my screen here. No, I think I'll do this. Make it better. I just decided to feed the dog five minutes before. <laughs> <laughs> because he will want to eat halfway through. And so I was, I flew to the garage and he takes medicine and we have little pill pockets and he's gotten smart because those orange pills taste like, so he spits them out. So <laughs> today he, he wouldn't even take it in the pill pocket. I had it like covered and he just like looked at me like, I don't want to take that. I'm like, buddy, if you're going to hip, your hips are going to hurt tonight if you don't take this. Kind of like mama you're gonna hurt later if you don't take your medicine so we were we had, she, he and i had a little argument about <laughs> the importance of taking his medicine mm -hmm. my husband went fishing so i'm i'm on dog duty and thank you for coming early i was going to quick post a little reminder on instagram here at the last minute so let me do that I was on, I clicked on almost an hour ago because I forgot you're in central time. <laughs> I am. You're not the first person who has forgotten that. My tech editor is in mountain time and I, I can never remember what time, what time it is there. Let me get this up here. Starting now. Turn. I need the meeting number. Oh shoot! Let's go over here. Can I get it from here? Yes, here it is. Uh, six six two six one nine. Oops, six one nine. Let's not make a typo here. Oh, no. That's done. Excellent. There we go. I'm back. Hi, Janet. Hi. Corey, Caroline just sent me pictures of hail in St. Paul the size of ping pong balls. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. My daughter lives in St. Paul and she just texted me. You wouldn't believe how it's hailing here. Yeah, oh Caroline gosh. too. Like big stuff. That's what Claire said. Uh, she put her yes. she went out and put her horse blankets over her car. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it would help. Oh. Kylie's actually out here. She just called me, I don't know, half an hour ago because she got her hair cut. Oh, so she's, she's not in St. Paul. No. Good. She's coming. She's um, going over to the high school to coach a kid who's going to national speech tournament over Memorial Day or something. Anyway, and, and then she's coming to mooch supper off her mom. Her <laughs> she missed it. Are you going out to dinner together? Probably. She said she'd call me. But she was in the hair salon here in our little town. And I've told that story on the podcast how I had Todd as a hairdresser years ago. So she drove out because she was going to go to Chan Hessen anyway. And um, there were two girls from high school in the lobby of the hair salon. And so, and Kylie's been out of school for seven years, right? And, um, and one of them she remembered had had a baby when right after they were in high school. And sure enough, there was a little seven-year-old boy standing there. She got out in her car and she called me and she says, mom, I can't imagine my life, the difference my life would have had, had I been her and got pregnant when I went off by freshman year of college and now have a seven-year-old son and had not done all the things that I've done and been able to go to. And this, like, she, it was like this rude awake, like mm -hmm. awakening, right? Like she, it was just there were two girls. She goes, I don't even think they recognized me. She said they didn't say anything. And she said, I haven't gone to school with the one since middle school, but um, the family lived in our neighborhood. And then the parents got divorced a couple of years after Kylie 
graduated or maybe a year after. Anyway, it was one of those moments, right? First she called me and she's like, mom, I just saw <laughs> so-and-so and so-and-so and you wouldn't believe it. She has a seven-year-old son. And I was like, oh, that's right. And she got pregnant right away. <laughs> so, wow. But yes, yeah, so that's why she's out here. Hi to Danielle and Pat and Ruthann and Wendy and Suzanne. Hi to everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I know I had to change the meeting from yesterday to today. And I'm sure that there will be people trying to hop on tomorrow, but I'm going to be driving on 169 South headed toward South Dakota and moving the meeting to today just meant that I don't have to drive at night tomorrow. So, and even though it stays light later, I need to go see my mom. She tore her iliopsoasis muscle in her leg. Ouch. Oh, she has not been able to walk for the last, walk well for the last almost year because I took her to the doctor up here in October and we are all assuming it's from her back surgery. And then the, the ax car accident that she got in made, they think made it worse. So she tore it further and she physically is not able to walk right now. Mm. It got worse and worse. So when I called her, she always says, we're fine. We're fine. We're doing okay. <laughs> and then, and my dad doesn't like to talk on the phone and he's the one I really need to talk to <laughs> about. But she said, we're not sleeping because I can't sleep. And then I can't get up out of bed. So I have to wake your father. And then he has to help me. And then he has to push me in the little, she has one of those, um, walkers with a seat yeah and then he pushes her out to the couch in the living room and and so they're not sleeping and i i need to go physically assess the situation i need yeah my brother i have two brothers in town so that's why i had to change the meeting I, I apologize that i had to move it up but and i'll do another one we're leaving um next week and it's memorial day so i was like boy i just don't know when to put it people might be getting together for barbecues or whatever. So, um, but I am going to be on the Boston Jen's splash pad party on Monday night at 8 PM of Memorial day, because she asked me because not enough people signed up to do the zooms on that Monday and it's her kickoff. So for any of you that don't know, Boston Jen has a podcast. It's called down cellar studios. And in the winter, she does a huge knit along called the Pigskin party. And it goes through the entire football season. You don't have to be a football fan. She just named it after that. And um, they have different challenges each month. And you can, you, it's a knit along. She has tons of prizes. She has a bunch of sponsors. And it, it runs from whatever it is, September through February. And then in the summer, she does the splash pad party. So it starts on Memorial Day and goes through the whole summer. So it's a three-month knit along. And if you finish any objects, you can enter them. But then also, if you finish an object by a sponsor, a vendor, um, if you're using their stitch markers or their bags, you can get extra points. And so I always sponsor it because that means that I just donate prizes. So I donate patterns or books or whatever. So I always sponsor it. So she got in touch and she didn't have anybody signed up for the 8 p.m. hour on Memorial Day evening. So I will be doing a one hour Zoom with her where you're, you're all invited to come and sit and knit with us too. And we can show off all of our IROC knits designs and maybe <laughs> convince some of those people over there to cast on something that they might see from you. So um, why don't you check in and tell me, I know where some of you live and who some of you are, but not everyone will know. So check in and tell me, um, where you're, where you're coming in from and maybe what you're, what you're working on right now. I've got my legacy park shawl. I started on my uh, lace section at the bottom during knitting today. And so I am almost done, but Danielle, you want to start? Sure. Um, I am DM Brown 240 on Ravelry and Instagram, and I live in Lexington, Kentucky. So this weekend is the Kentucky Sheep and Fiber Festival. I can't oh. wait. And I will be picking up two skeins for my Legacy Park shawl. So in the meantime, I'm doing the Concord socks like I don't know how many other people. <laughs> it was the one pattern I didn't do for the pairs of socks, Cal. So I'm. this is a deep dyed yarn. Look at how it's pooling. Oh, fun. Isn't that cool? 
Yeah. Yeah, it was really, I, I saw it on Instagram. It's either, it's even prettier on yeah. Instagram. And Deep Dyed Yarn is my local dyer. So I have a little bit of a connection to her. So. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's my plan for the knit along. And Diane knits more than any of us put together. Can I just Danielle. say? Danielle. <laughs> she has a huge output. <laughs> that's because I I'm not working right <laughs> yeah I spend my days with my mom who's 96 so I have a lot of wow. time nice. she keeps me happy um, but I want to say this to you Diane I hear people all the time <laughs> saying that they yeah. don't have enough time to knit right I wish I had more knitting time I have so many things I want to knit don't you still feel that way, even though we have all the time in the world to knit? Like, yeah, there's, I want to say to those not... people, and it sounds so terrible, right? But I want to say to those people, I knit all the time and I don't have enough time to knit, right? Like, this is my job. I knit all the time and I still want to knit all the things and there's still enough hours in the day for me. I still want more. Don't you agree? Yeah. When 11 o'clock hits, I don't want to put my knitting down. But you keep calling me Diane instead of Danielle. Oh, Danielle. <laughs> sorry. I know better, too. I know better. Anyway, yeah. I find that, you know, people always complain about having to go to work or needing to do things and not having enough time to craft or knit. And I think, I don't have enough time either. And it's I, don't know how I, ever, I, do. <laughs> I don't know how I ever had time to work in the first place. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Ruth Ann, tell us what you're knitting on and where you're coming from. I am coming from Dover, Ohio, which is about an hour and a half directly south of Cleveland and two hours east of, or west of Pittsburgh. So we're kind of in between. I was actually just up your way this past weekend. My daughter's in grad school at the University of Minnesota. We had a beautiful weekend. Yes, you did. Beautiful weather. I am knitting the Legacy Park shawl, but I'm not oh, very far. You've, got, you've gotten going. So now you're at the easy part. I'm at the easy part. I'm also doing a test knit for um, Chic and Regal Knits, and I'm doing a knit along, a sweater knit along of Kimberly McElindon's that's almost done. So both of those will finish like with a month to go on this knit along. So I just barely got it started. But yeah, yes, I'm well, on the easy so part. I am coming to Ohio in November. Really? Where? I am going to teach. I will tell you right now. Tell me. Look at my calendar. I just got my contract hired. It is called Holiday Escape at the Mills Park Hotel in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Opposite side of the state. Okay. Yeah. Holiday Escape. Yep. Escape. It is being sponsored by Main Street Yarns and 614 Knit Studio. Okay, I will look at that. That I, think... I am teaching, I'm doing skeins to skeins on Friday night, and I'm teaching 50 Shades of Shawls on Saturday. Okay. And it's a, uh, like what is a that Tuesday. area near? I think it's no. Dayton area, Yellow Springs. I think it's, I don't think it's far from Columbus. Ah, maybe it's between Columbus and Dayton. I think you I... said 614, that's the area code in Columbus, which made me think maybe it is. Yeah, I, I, I taught for her a couple of years ago in Columbus. I'm pretty sure she's in okay. Columbus. It might be closer to Columbus than I think that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty geographically challenged until I go somewhere. <laughs> like I don't know where things are in states, right? When we well, when you fly, it's always hard to tell anyway. Right. You when know, you don't really know where you are. are. Moving to Richmond, Virginia, I literally had to go to a map to figure out where Richmond was in relation to like the other things on the East Coast. Like, I was just like, I'm not really sure where it is in the middle of the state over there. Is it on the east or the <laughs> left or the right? Well, not... Yellow Springs is a part of the Dayton metropolitan area. Oh, okay. So it's a yeah, little it's bit right. west of, um, my daughter is actually moving back to Ohio in November. So depending on the timing, this may or may yeah. not be possible. But yeah, I will definitely check into it. It is November 18th and 19th at okay. the Mills Park Hotel. And I just got just got booked for that. I, I will look so, into that. So I have to, and I'll announce it on the podcast on Monday. It's probably I have, maybe a three hour drive from here. Janet's gonna roll her eyes, but I, I booked like four more teaching gigs today. <laughs> <laughs> or yesterday, three at Stephen B and one at B Woolen. And so I'm gonna be busy, 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 busy. 
people are starting to have classes in person and you know the yarn stores really need people back in the shops because mm -hmm. they took a huge hit right? right so a couple of our yarn stores are still masked and you know i mean caution absolutely caution but they need to have some events so people come back <laughs> need to have stuff going on so hey pat you want to tell us what you're working on well Sure. So I started the Concord socks and um, I just wanted something on bigger needles. So I decided because my hand was hurting. So then I started the um, knitting in the light at the library cowl. Oh, yeah. Because um, I'm also enjoying using up um, remnants, you know, leftovers. So I was just talking about that cowl to a lady the other day because she wanted she's a newer knitter and wanted to learn some knits, di different stitches. Right. Mm -hmm. so I told her about doing that, that baby blanket book, you know, that's the building blocks one where you knit yep. a different square. And then I said, my knitting at the library cowl has four different stitch patterns in it and you can do it in any yarn you want. And yeah. so we were talking about that. I I'm doing the stitch pattern now where you uh, knit one round and then in the back of the loop. And I've never done that. It's a really interesting um, texture. Oh, isn't it pretty? Yeah, I, I really like I had it. that hat right here. I could show you all. Let me just stand up and look. And the yarn has a little tonality to it. So it's really fun. It makes the most beautiful fabric. It I does. love that stitch pattern. Actually, yeah. both sides. Both sides yes. are nice. It almost starts to look um, herringbone or mm -hmm. kind of woven. Oh, yeah. It's one of my yeah. favorites. It's in the Choose Your Own Path hat, cowl, and mitten set in the Minnesota 52 book. That's uh, the first place I ever used that. But then for beginner knitters, that's an easy stitch pattern, right? <laughs> like an easy one that they can, they can manage to learn a new stitch, but get a lot of bang for their buck. Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm having fun with that. And it's a little, it's just what I needed right now. I just finished yeah. a wedding shawl for our daughter and that was very uh, attention yes. consuming. So this is better. Susan, I'm glad you got here. I saw your thing on Instagram, but your name had popped up as I was typing my response. I was <laughs> like, I just posted and then I saw you hop in. So I'm glad you found yeah. it. I found it right after I posted. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I just don't want you to think I didn't answer because I saw it popping up. I was posting it in the group as I was starting the starting the Zoom because it I was at the beginning and I was looking at the end. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. Janet, what are you working on? I love these Concord socks. <laughs> I just love the pattern. It's it's so pretty and it's it's a nice combination of easy, I can do it while I'm doing other things and just enough interest where I'm still paying attention. Um, it just comes out so pretty. And I, I like following your pattern. I, I love it, it's just all right there. And yeah. Just my do my little checks. Check boxes. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on. So for those of you who weren't here last week, Janet is in my local knitting group locally. Yeah. But she doesn't get to come all the time because she has grandkids. Yeah. So I don't yeah. see her as much as I see other people in my knitting group, but we have been mm. friends for a number of years. So yep. I, I'm more familiar. I can tease and, and talk to her more familiarly than uh, some of the rest <laughs> of you. Don't feel like yeah. I'm, you know, I'm teasing Knit her sometimes, but. Knitting together for a long time. It's been Yeah, wonderful. we have. Okay, who else hasn't shared what they're knitting on and where they're from? Um, I haven't yet. Hi, Wendy. This is Wendy. I'm just working on some vanilla socks right now because we're in Sioux Falls. I'm generally from I know, Wyoming. I saw that. So, what hospital are you at? Avera. Okay. So we're staying in a campground there right now. So my husband's running back home so I can get my, my socks are back home that I'm working on when we had to run in the middle of the night. I don't know I how much them. you want to share, but they're there for a medical situation. Right. Yeah, and we're here for my son's, um, he's getting some organ transplants. 
So we're waiting for the call. <laughs> they just oh. wanted us closer. So good luck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to, when I read that, I was like, you know, there are people in the world going through stuff that we don't know about. So I will definitely say a prayer for you, Wendy. And I know there are a couple of other prayer warriors in this group that mm -hmm. believe in the the value of prayer yeah. and good thoughts. And thankfully, he's at an excellent hospital. There, I can't say enough about him. Yeah, I know. My mom went through Sioux Valley Hospital, which is no longer Sioux Valley as a mm -hmm. nurse. And then they got per bought and they, you know, in, <laughs> in South Dakota, they got really good medical care. They, they got do. Two big, huge facilities in the heart hospital and the transplant hospitals and the children's right. hospitals. It, you know, South Dakota doesn't have a lot of tax. <laughs> the <laughs> corporations can go there for nothing. And so there are, you know, you are yeah. big, Corp is there like their big companies are figuring out that and Sioux Falls is a nice size city. I mean, there are four high schools in Sioux Falls, so it's not, yeah, it's a nice town. If you kind of sometimes think of the plains, right? But they have for right. medical care. I had a friend um that I was walking with at the dog park, and she was going to Sioux Falls um because she had a horrific accident. Um with her pelvis and stuff and she was trying to have a baby she got mm -hmm. married she was trying to get go through fertility and they were driving to sioux falls because that's where they could get the specialist that would help her with you know the right. problem that she had because of this accident with her pelvis so yeah yeah and i think I, we're exactly where we needed to be with the specialist yeah what is his first name Dave. What's his first name? David. David. Thank David. you. Yeah. So do you have any idea how long you might have to stay? You've been there oh, a while, right? We've been here since March 9th. <gasps> is we got the call that night to get here. And unfortunately, he had an infection at that time. So we couldn't go with that set. And then there's been a couple of other sets that haven't worked out for one reason or another. So. Uh, yeah. When, At I any know, time, even said it had been a couple months. I was just like, oh man. Yeah. We got to go through the big storm that they just had last week. And oh, that was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> and that, if you guys point... didn't see pictures on the news about the dust storm and the pre storm that went through the Eastern South Dakota, you should Google it. If you, if you want to, I've never seen anything quite like that. It blew so hard. And because of the farms and the fields, it was incredible. Yeah, it was like pitch black at five o'clock at night yeah. because of the dirt blowing in and then yeah. all the trees that are down everywhere. Yeah. yeah. My nephew lives in Brookings and they didn't have electricity oh. for three days. Right. In Brookings, which is an hour north. My mom yeah, one of the ladies in the camper next to us, her cousin lives in Brookings, and they lost everything around their farmhouse. Okay. And my brother was at the gym working out. He's a runner, and he came out, and both his front windshield and his back windshield were shattered. Oh, wow. wow. Like, they just yeah, had, we, it, it was incredible. Yeah, we had put both uh, cars in the bear parking garage, so... <laughs> And hoped our camper was going to be okay, but it was fine. Yeah, I think it was like a, couple it, of trees. It a little further north than, it, I don't even know how it tracked, but mom and yeah. dad said their part of town wasn't nearly as badly hit as other parts. Yeah, over by Averis where it was really hit pretty bad over, I can't remember the name of the park there, like McKesson Park or something. McKinnon. McKinnon Park McKinnon was really park. hit. Oh, and those old homes. If you guys... Yeah have an, a historical area in your in your town where the old houses and the old trees are that's what McKinnon Park area in Sioux Falls would be like so oh mm, yeah if they lost trees that's really sad yep yeah and there was quite a bit of damage in the park but I don't think anybody got hurt in Sioux Falls thankfully mm. gosh yeah, yeah. So, that's I've true. just been knitting my stress away <laughs> So what did you say you're working on? Right now I'm working on some vanilla socks. My husband has to go run back to Gillette this weekend. So he's going to get, I've been working on some au jus 
on Ju pair. On Ju pair. Yep. Yep. I'm working on those, but they're there. So he's got to bring them back. And I haven't been able to find a yarn store other than Hobby Lobby or Joanne's. So here. The, um, the yarn store is closing and it may have already closed. It already closed. It was in that white According house. According to Joanne's. That, yeah, yeah. It was in that white house. And it, um, she had been there for years, but she was um, a little disabled. And I, I'm not sure if she just couldn't keep up with it anymore or, you know, it's too bad because, right. you know, the entire knitting magazine comes out of Sioux Falls. I don't know if you're aware of that, but XR, oh, I didn't know that. That all comes out of Sioux Falls. They all, <laughs> all those guys that started that company. It's all in Sioux Falls and several times throughout the years, there's been no yarn store in Sioux Falls. And then they yeah. run stitches events out of Sioux Falls. And I'm like, couldn't someone inv invest Open one. <laughs> in a yarn shop in Sioux Falls, South Dakota? There was one years ago when I was in college, for sure. And then, um, and that had Needlepoint too. You know, that was mm -hmm. more common back in the day where they had both things. Um, but then, uh, this one had been there for a while. I had taught for her. I had done my book talk for her. And um, yeah, she was a nice gal, but she had that whole house. It was kind of like um, rooms of yarn, full, full of, of yarn. That's why what the one is back where I live. There's a yarn store about an hour away and they restored a Victorian house and have yep. different rooms for it. And that's it. So one of my classes there, I taught out on the big veranda front porch. Oh, really? We had that wicker been fun. chairs and wicker furniture, and they all sat and knit in that. And I stood on the porch and <laughs> taught a class. So that, that was, was that's the first time I ever taught outside. That would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lovely evening, and it felt very, I don't know, romantic. And, you know, people knitting on the porch and paint. Yeah, it was fun. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to wish you the best of luck there and I'm coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck on your on drive. My mother and see why she can't, you know, why she can't walk. And if she's, if she's really sharing everything with me, I don't know. Yep. We'll see, you know? Yeah. I have a sister that's really sick back home in late oh, South Dakota. Dear. And my dad said, when you race back, you better stop by because she's not going to tell you how bad off she is. And I'm glad he gave me the heads up so that I stopped by. For like right. right. Yeah. She's like, well, I just didn't want to worry you. <laughs> That's right. Like my mom too. <laughs> then when she said, dad and I haven't, we haven't been sleeping at all. I thought, oh my, I gotta, yeah. I gotta go see what's going on. I'm going to have to run down there. But well, Susan, what are you working on? I uh, just frogged a hat this morning. So... <laughs> I have two skeins of Malabrigo worsted, and oh, nice. I'm, casting, I'm casting on the nice capades hat. Oh, lovely. lovely. So have you, I do want to say one thing. Danielle, I follow you on Instagram. I'm Sue Wright 2840, and I, I'm hurting you all the time. I love your, yeah. all of your stuff. <laughs> I think I think we've chatted a little bit. We may have. Um, I'm from California. And uh, right now I'm doing two of uh, Imagine Landscapes gnome knit alongs as well. This is my year of small projects. I've had too many that were too big. And so I'm not doing shawls. I have no opportunity to wear them here. Uh, I generally knit all year long for a Christmas market at my church that raises money for mission. And we're usually in the vicinity of 14, 15,000 a year that's raised from different things that people oh, wow. either, there are knitters, there are um, people can buy shares and then uh, Habitat sells things. So it, it's, a, there are about 12 different groups. So that's a lot of fun. I want to ask you a question, Corey. Have yes. you heard of ladder back jacquard? Yes. I have now heard it twice in a week. Once was Sarah of Imagine Landscape, once was on the Yarniacs podcast. And so I've 
it's it's on my Ravelry page. So I started a hat to try it mm-hmm. and it says low battery. We'll see if I have to jump up and get a cord in a minute. Um, I didn't care for it. I just wondered if anybody had heard of it. It's a way of doing color work where you have these extra stitches every five stitches and you purl through the back loop when you don't need the stitch and it ladders on the inside of the hat. I found it way too bulky plus going over like 12 stitches. I think you're going to catch your finger in those long floats even though they're attached to the ladder. So that's what I frogged. Okay so Mm. we have a woman here in Minnesota and I 20 years ago, I was in her knitting group before I moved to Virginia and came back. You can go ahead. Yeah. And um, she, her name, we call her State Fair Susan Mm -hmm. (laughs) because she always wins the prizes at the State Fair. Uh Um, She's an extraordinary knitter and her name's Susan Rainey and she has a blog. She has the hat. She has the hat pattern. She has the hat. Uh Yep. And the reason that she, and she teaches a class. And Mm -hmm. the reason that she wanted to learn that technique was if you're knitting with light colored yarn and your colorway that you're working with is peeking through, you're getting that bleeding through Mm -hmm. with that jacquard method, it won't, that won't happen. So I feel like there are a couple of people that are teaching that method now. It's kind of come up in the last couple of years as, you know, being that one of the new techniques that you should learn. But I really think it has a specific purpose, right? Like, I don't know that I would use it on all right. colors. But she really felt like, and she's taught it at the yarnery over here. Um, and she knit, she designed that hat pattern on Ravelry. Um, that was, the, it was like a cream hat. Yeah, that, color, that was the pattern. Color behind. Mm-hmm. So, and I, yeah. you know, I, I tried it. I did a little sample. She had, um. She might even have put a video somewhere at one time, maybe on her, on her YouTube. She doesn't really have a podcast. She knits exquisite, exquisite things. You know, the, the lace weight pineapple tablecloths and bead, beaded stuff and um, co- color work with 67 colors, you know. And I think when you're that kind of knitter, doing that technique, that jacquard technique is is something that fills you up and I'm not that kind of knitter but and we all know that right <laughs> like I'm a how fast can I have the finished project done I don't want to futz around pearl through the back loop would would make me crazy long term so I don't have a need for it but I do like knowing that it's there yeah. and what it is. Yeah. Imagine Landscapes just posted on her spot. She's the one doing the gnome knit along. She knit the Alaska sweater and I've knit the Alaska hat. Mm. What I can see is that if my two fingers were the peak of the tree, she had all this color work that had shorter floats coming up and then she got up to here and I can see adding, you can add it and take it out at any point. I can see adding the ladder and going from the point of one tree to the ladder to the other so that in that wider section, you wouldn't see it through. Then the rest of the net, uh, sweater stock in that. So I can see a purpose to it. I didn't care for it in the hat. And that's just me, I guess. Yeah. But, um, I just thought it was interesting. I'd never heard of it. And now I heard of it twice in one week. So she used so, it on the on on a sweater she's knitting. Is that what you said? Uh, Sarah of Imagine Landscapes yep. knit the Alaska sweater, and the bottom band is the trees. If you've yep. knit the Alaska yep. hat, it's yeah, the I trees. Okay. Yeah, and so I can. She used it between those peaks. She yep. put it in. Yep. And then the rest of it is knit up in a solid color. I can see that. Um, yeah, it, it was nice to try it. I actually was at my local yarn shop and I told her about it and she'd never heard of it. So I I knit enough of the hat. She said, bring it in. So I, I took it in and showed it to her just so she could see it. She said, well, it's good to know because she's a yarn shop. Yep. Um, 
But yeah, I, I frogged the hat and I'm going to very happily do these stars in the nice capades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Susan, uh, she was up at B Woolen, which is north of me, one Saturday or Sunday afternoon, knitting with a group of people when I went in with a friend to shop. And I walked over and looked over her shoulder, and I know her, um, and looked over her shoulder, and mm -hmm. I could not believe that she was sitting amongst all those people with all these skeins of yarn attached to this glorious colorwork sweater. I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, but that's the kind of work she does, right? Like she prefers yeah. making these really, you know, fine gauge, beautiful, overall, technically challenging pieces. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to find every mm -hmm. possible way to not do technically challenging. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to do <laughs> color work and I want to have fun and maybe learn something new, but I don't want it to, be, I don't want it to be hard. Like, oh, did I, oh, that sweater I'm working on with the saddle shoulders. I was showing them at knitting today. I'm going to grab it because we have a couple more people to chat here. I forgot to say I'm from Maryland. Um, in case anybody's. I did. Who was that? Pat. Ah, yep. And, and Suzanne has not. Right. I almost gave up on this. If my friend Stacy hadn't come to town and sorted me out. So here's the shoulder. So you start and you wow. make this little striped piece. So then you have 14 ends sitting there, which is, you know, and that's the shoulder. And then you're going to knit with this brown. You have two of these little shoulder pieces, one on either side. So then you pick up around the shoulder and then you pass down a bunch of stitches for the back of the neck. And then you pick up over here and then you pass on for the front and it's a cardigan. So, okay, I, I can get that. And then, so it's like, it's going to look like this. And then you're going to do these short rows. Well, in the pictures, all you could see of the shoulder was this. And I, the short rows for me weren't at the right spot. And I could not figure out, because for me, shoulder, you know, short rows are at your back neck or center back. And I thought that maybe they should be around this piece because I have never done this construction. And the, the, I had eight stitch markers on where they told me to put them. And I, I had such a, a, just a brain. I could not, I did not know where I was headed. I don't know what I was doing wrong or whatever. And Stacy came and she picked it up and she counted the stitches. And she said, I think you're short a couple rows in here. She said, it said knit 21 rows or something. And I said, okay, so we fixed that. And then she just started knitting. And you know where the short rows are? Right here in this little wedge. You're making this little wedge for your front before you start to go down. But I, I had never seen those. So you make four little wedges, which is why you have eight stitch markers on. And I was shocked that mm. that's where I was supposed to be working. It did not. It never dawned on me. And she's like, well, sometimes you just have to follow the pattern, Corey. <laughs> like, I know, but I thought that they were in the wrong place. And I did have too few stitches picked up so that it, the numbers weren't coming out right. But now I'm well on my way. But like for this, at some point, I then it just turns into a raglan. It just becomes a raglan from there down. You're just increasing. So... To me, I was like, well, why didn't I just do a raglan from the top of the shoulder, right? Like, why wouldn't I just started with a raglan construction? It looks like the, but the shoulder looks like a, it looks like such a pretty um, shoulder though. It is. It looks like it'll fit you really nicely. Oh yeah, I think. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's I pretty. It's very nice. But th this whole construction of how, how you made these two squares and then you picked up around them and all the ends that you had on both sides and then you know you're striping it down I, I just I had no idea where I was headed 
and I almost gave up if Stacy would not have come and counted my stitches and said, hey, you, you, you just have too few stitches in this one section. I'll show you guys what it's supposed to look like. And all there's, here's the picture. Oh, that's nice. So it's oh, just wow. a tweed, worsted weight tweed cardigan. And I've knit a hundred sweaters, right? That I should, I should be able to have knit this in the dark. But this is the only picture that I had to go from, and I could not figure out how this was happening. I, I just in my head, I thought it was one thing, and it wasn't even close to that thing. So, wow, I'm not. I'm with you on some of the hard stuff, Susan. I, <laughs> I almost gave up and started over. I thought I've got this beautiful yarn, and I, I just wasn't even. And now it seems so obvious to me. It's like, duh, right? Like uh, in the moment I couldn't see it and now I can't unsee it. All right, hi, Suzanne, mm -hmm. friend. Hello. Nice to see everybody. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I know who, well, I know who Danielle is cause she put her thing in there. <laughs> but um, well, uh, before I tell, before I introduce myself, Will you all tell me who you are on Ravelry so I know? So Ruthie Ann, who are you? Ruthie Ann 21 on Ravelry. Okay, I'll be able to In, figure out who you are later. On um, Instagram, it's just my RA Dingwell, my initials and the okay. last one. I'll start with you on Ravelry when I look for, because I like to look up afterwards and see who everybody is. Um, and mm -hmm. Wendy, who are you on Ravelry? I'm WKH25. Okay. And Janet, who are you? Janet's frozen for me. Wolfstock. Wool oh, wool stock. stock. Oh, okay. I recognize I'm your name now. Stock. Okay, perfect. And then Pat, you're Pat. I know who you are. Um, because I recognize you from the your your name and your Ravelry name are the same. It's Pat Co. P A T K O. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then Susan, um, what is yours? I'm knitting that eight. And there okay. aren't two N's. It's just K-N-I-T-T-U-N-U-T eight. Okay. And where in California are you? And then I'm, I am in Cyprus. It's near Long Beach. I know where you are. I went to school in Lakewood. And I found, oh, did you? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly and so where I've been are. listening so... to Corey's podcast and I've done your recipes and uh, <laughs> I bought your, um, whatever that dressing was, that Western dressing, but I, we read a lot of the same books, and um, so I really enjoy the podcast. And Corey, I love your irrepressible spirit, and don't ever apologize for talking on or whatever, because we all can watch or not watch if it like it or don't like it, but I just, I love your energy. Thank you very much. I, uh, Janet knows this, but I have a little trouble at my knitting group because there's a lady there who doesn't like me to talk. Oh, she's, she's go away. Makes things <laughs> hard for me because she'll, she, she's, um, 90. How old is she, Janet? 92. So that's why I took to Corey and knitting and group. She, she wants to be the boss and I sit at the opposite end of the table so that I can just. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like yeah. I'm 61. You ain't not going to change who I am. If I think it, it comes right out my mouth. I am sorry, right? <laughs> so, but Janet knows that. You are that refreshing. Where that comes from, that little piece of yeah. me that still hears that little voice of her saying, well, you can't get an edge board in edgewise with Corey ever, right? That little, that little zinger that took me, <laughs> took me down, right? That's rude. You can't remember. I mean, there are. 17 other people in our knitting group but the one person is the one that I feel bad about right I should just it should be fine but we all have that in us a little bit I have a knitting group go ahead I've got a knitting group that has about a dozen in it and one person dominates it and my usual thought is she needs to talk she has health problems she has a son who's 10 with health problems and so when I'm there, she's the one talking. 
you know, I go to a different group that just has four of us on a different day, and we all talk roughly the same. So, you know, they're kind of different times and places for different people. I think we should all give everybody a little grace. Yeah, I agree. I am certainly able to be a very good listener for people. And I end up spending a lot of my knitting group time helping fix other people's Mm -hmm. mistakes and problems. I went today and one of our group members said, I need you to sit on my (laughs) my end as soon as I got there. And I thought, okay, not going to get any knitting done today, but that's okay. (laughs) We got her sorted. But I am that person for our group, right? I'm the one who... They will say, well, just ask Mm -hmm. Corey. Even though all of them are perfectly capable of helping one another, there is no hierarchy here Mm -hmm. where I know more at all. (laughs) They were trying to decide what kind of bind off to do, you know? They didn't think the one bind off was very good, and I had to agree. It didn't look very good. She was trying to do that Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off with cotton yarn on a shawl. And um, then she thought maybe she should, should should switch it to the the other one where you knit two together through the back loop and then slip it back over. And that ended up looking much better. And I just taught that that cast on or bind off to someone at knitting on Wednesday. And so I, she said through the back loop. And I said, that's what the pattern that I taught on Wednesday called for is knit two together through the back loop, then move it back over and do it again. And so she said, oh, I don't think I would have thought to do it through the back loop. So then she tried it and she did like that. It looked better. But then she said, just a second. I have one more thing in my bag to show you. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm kind of happy to be that person. I kind of like um, the problem solving. Does anyone else like to be the problem solver? Mm-hmm. Like to look at the problem? No, none of you. I do. I, I do. Right? Yep. And I, I like taught in a knit shop. Oh. Yeah, I like looking yeah, I, at a... I taught in a knit shop and... Um, I'm just going to stop. Um, yeah, and it, it taught me so much. Right. Because you had to come to each pattern cold. Yep. And then have someone ask you a question and sit there and think, how would I do this? You know, exactly. and so I loved it. I, I, she closed right before COVID hit, but I taught four years and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I like that feeling. I, I feel accomplished after I've set someone straight, like after I have helped them work it through. And then I, I there's that little sense of pride that says, oh, we got it, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, yay, we got mm-hmm. it. And it's, it's better mm-hmm. and it's right. I, mm-hmm. I really enjoy that, that little piece. I feel mm-hmm. like we haven't gotten to hear Suzanne. I know. But she Suzanne was, uh... knows and I'm a chat chatterbox. <laughs> she still That's loves okay. me. Suzanne, tell of us what I you're knitting on. I'm knitting dog words. Um, oh, this is right. the dog words um, hat that I'm making right now. Oops, let me see if I can show it. Where's my head? <laughs> there we go. Hold on a second. I know what I'll do. Let me change my screen. So for let a me tell all of you that Suzanne is our new um, administrator in the group. So I met Suzanne when she came to the Twin Cities and we've been, we text back and forth all the time. And um, Suzanne has been my prayer warrior through a couple of of situations and she was helping with the other knit along. And so I said, "Hmm, is there any chance that you would like to help with this knit along in my group? And she's like, well, what would that entail? And I said, just reminding me to check the group every now and then. <laughs> and comment. I sometimes get busy and I forget. So that's who's um, commenting uh, in our group more often and trying to keep things moving along. And if she sees that I am asked a question and nothing is, nobody's answering, I told her to feel free to jump right in and answer it for me. Because I am have not been good at now, since I asked her, I've been doing a much better job. You have been, I'm gold star. I think I've been trying to impress her with my, my abilities. <laughs> You're doing great. All right, so here we go. So this is my dogwood here. Now you can see this is my corrugated, corrugated ribbing for the dogwoods hat that I'm making. And um, this is actually a confession. This is my second time making the hat. Here's my first time. Um, I, if it looks exactly the same, it is because it's the same colors. Um, and... 
<laughs> I made it. Um, I really like how it came out, except for um, this is actually a gift from my friend who lives in St. Paul, and she is a, a big, big dog person. And um, I wanted to make her a special gift because she lost her husband um, unexpectedly. It was a year ago on, on Monday. And um, the hat came out really well as far as like the, it, the pattern is beautiful, but I am not a really strong color work person. And so while there are places where you have to carry the floats a long time and I did, and I did trap my floats and things, it just didn't come out as um, like the, it just, it, there's like places where it's tight. And so it fits, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel, I did as a special gift, I didn't want to give something that wasn't that I wasn't really, really happy with. So I went back and got more of the same yarn because um, I decided why not? And so I'm knitting it again and having a do-over. But this time, um, you can't see it right now, but I'm actually gonna knit my color work inside out um, to see if that helps me keep mm -hmm. my colors, my floats better. And so I just, this is the problem. I just started my first round of the color work and that is not a good round to start talking on a listening or talking on a podcast because I've already tinked back half the round, um, which is okay because I believe knitting is a process and if you could do it once, you could do it twice. So it's all good. Did you okay, that, hat, that hat is darling. Will you show us both sides? Yeah. That yeah. is so cute. Does it okay, say so pet the dog, walk the dog? It says walk the dog. Wait, let me find my words. Um, it says, okay, so here's pet the dog. And then there's walk the dog. And then there is feed, feed the dog. That is so cute. So, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I did block it, Corey. And um, I think you started to ask that. Work no. Um, it, the problem is the places where um, between the rows of the... Um, of the words, there's some places we have to carry the a long way, and uh, like almost a full round of the green, like a, of the green olive color, I have to go yep. around, and um, it's just not. I just didn't have enough room, but I mean, it is. Part of me actually wanted to cut on the inside and see if I could like loosen it up a teeny bit, but then I thought, at this point, somebody could still enjoy this hat, and yeah. if I cut it, then I'm opening up Pandora's box. And so sometimes you have to know, I have to know when to leave good enough alone. So if, even if I don't, you know, like, even if I, I, I could, I could comfortably give this gift, this is a gift to like somebody who needs a hat, you know, but not for the person that I really want to impress with a real special love gift. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that hat. I wrote those patterns after the Knit Words book came out. And I, yeah, I just love so. making the little dog bone and the little heart and yeah. Yeah. Paw print. It's really there cute. Are float, there are definitely floats. I, I, I get it. There's, there, are, there would have been even longer float, floats if I'd have left out the space in between, which is why we have the heart and the <laughs> dog bone. Because right. when I did it, I just had the words on it. Yeah. When I first wrote it. Yeah. Part of me, actually, as you say that, maybe I wonder if I should go back and add like a little, like lice, a little more yeah. lice. Oh, there. for sure. Snowflake. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, for sure. Um, just some, maybe just because I want to have success um, yeah. and finish it with happy sure face. But we'll see. Um, we shall see. And then I'm really intrigued about the legacy. I'm curious about... Um, I want, I have the pattern and I'm super excited about it. Who has part of it done? Like, like the, I want to see the, the, the cast on part. How far, are you on your, your legacy, Corey? Yep. But Ruth Ann has it on the needles. On oh, the needles. Oh, okay. What does it look like at the bottom part? It looks like it just pretty much goes straight across. Okay. It, All right. It's an I-cord edge. Uh -huh. Knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit. Or pearl right. knit, pearl knit, pearl, slipping the first stitch. Yeah. Well, okay. this makes the an I-cord tube. Okay. So instead right. of doing a garter tab to start the shawl, where you do, you knit six rows usually, sometimes eight, and you pick up all the way around those at the top. Uh -huh. Instead of doing that, this is an I-cord tab. So you have mm -hmm. to do a little special technique to make it seamless. And it takes you about 
10 minutes, right, Ruthann? Yeah. And I, 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 when I the video. first looked at it, I was like, this is not going to work. I don't right. understand this at all. I know. And then when you get to it, you're like, oh, and it, yeah, it does work. Up. So I don't, I'm going to hold it up really close here, but it makes, it's completely seamless across the top. Oh, that's See? pretty. Like it never, there's no real break. There's one little um, tiny pearl bump in it from where you did a slip knot or where you started your first stitch, but otherwise that, and then your two yarn overs start right here and here. So that's the only, it's just that tiny little piece that you're making to make it completely seamless across the top for that I cord. So you do That's have cool. to do Judy's Magic Cast on, which I hate with a raging passion. But yeah, <laughs> um, once I found that video that of that lady who did a really nice job of doing the pickup, and um, then I was like, well, I don't have to make the video, which is lovely. <laughs> Then I, and I've been telling people, you do not have to do it. You can just cast on and have a divot at your center back, right? Like if you don't care enough um, about that, but I, I wanted to try to make it that seamless across there. So you cast on 10 and five of them go on hold for a minute, but that's what's making that, that center little piece. Cool. And then, Ruthann, would you agree the next part of the shawl is like almost remedial knitting? It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I do like that you have the star stitch rows occasionally. Yes. You know, because it does get, you get in that repetition, it's good TV knitting. Um, I had it with me at the airport, although I didn't take it out, but um, it would have been good airport knitting. You know, it's good to talk. And then you just have that, you and know, those star stitch row rows aren't hard either. The what? The star stitch rows aren't hard. They're not hard. They're just no. different than what you've done before, but they're yeah. not at all hard. No, right. So yeah, it's it's super simple, relaxing kind of knitting. And yeah, you once you start your edge stitches, you you know that the yarn over happens and you know exactly. what you're getting into it. Yeah. I, I would just say it's just and really so, mindless and then you get the star is. stitches that happen. Uh, that's really pretty. It's mindless. When you talked about how you knit all those garter stitch prayer shawls it's not as mindless as that no true i've done i've done a lot of prayer shawl knitting back in the day <laughs> yeah that me too lots of garter in me that too. what was that me too. Home, home, home spot home spot our, home church still does does. our church still does them and we do them for graduates and then like we'll ask them for their college colors and we are close to both Kent State oh. and Akron University, and their colors are both navy blue and gold. And so we oh. have all knit ah. so many of those navy blue and gold prayer shawls we could scream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Lots of prayer shawls. <laughs> Every year on Ash Wednesday. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. No, I was going to say every year on Ash Wednesday, our knitters cast on. Um, I do little kits, and it, I haven't done them the last couple of years, of course, but homespun yarn, provided the needles, provided a pattern. And one year we actually had 46 prayer shawls made. So, because a lot of people who weren't in our group but knit that were members, it was so fun. You know, the next year we had 12, but. <laughs> whatever it was still fun <laughs> yeah that's the thing probably prayer shawl burnout <laughs> yes i definitely got prayer shawl burnout at yep. some point mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. yep we had done one for a pastor who left years ago the prayer shawl ministry started when he was there so they did not get them when they arrived but i had coordinated you know we were all making the blocks you know, I passed mm -hmm. out yarn and coordinating colors and had rolled it into separate balls mm -hmm. and we all knit these blocks. Everyone contributed. His wife knit them right under his nose. He had no idea. I sewed them all together and made this big prayer <laughs> shawl as a gift when they left. So now the pastor we have now is leaving. Do you want to, somebody says like, he's leaving June 12th. Someone said to me after Easter, do you think we could do that again? Would you do that again? No, I will not do that again. <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah, you got it. You have, have to have more lead time than that for yeah. project. And also, like he they were given prayer shawls when they arrived. So, how much stuff do they need to move? 
Great. Is anybody doing anything fun or different this weekend? Anybody? It's supposed to be hiking? really hot here. Oh, really? Like almost 100 oh. on Sunday. Wow. So. And we can't plan anything, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, where are you? Where are you? Near Baltimore, Maryland. Wow. It hasn't been hot. It's been beautiful, but um, we have heat advisories this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then thunderstorms. So we'll see. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool here on Saturday and Sunday, and we're going to go up north, and it's going to be cooler here. So, I mean, Ross is up fishing, and the, the water temperature still hasn't raised above. I don't even know what. they He packed winter colts for for fishing. Wow. The that ice sounds like fun. Awesome. That's Two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, the ice was not off the big lake. And they were worried about it not being off by the time fishing opener happened. Which is fascinating because then the minnows don't run wait until the ice is off. And then when the minnows start running, I didn't realize this because I, I don't know a ton about fishing, but only the Native American population up there can trap the minnows and sell them. And that it's a, like a cyclical thing has to do with like, you know, spring and the moons and all that stuff. And I, I was just shocked. I, where do I think the minnows come from? I don't know, but that's what they fish with. And so, you know, you go in and you buy 12 or 24 minnows and then you fish because they, he fishes on a huge lake. You can't see across it. Looks like an ocean, you know, and deep and beautiful. It's right at, at the mouth of the, just down from the mouth of the Mississippi. But he said, there are no minnows. And last weekend was fishing opener and there were no minnows. You can sure. fish with other stuff, but he usually doesn't. So yeah, I really sometimes wonder what we're doing to our world, right? With mm. these temperatures and the, the weather, you know, what some place is burning and the other place is flooding at the same time. And, right. you know, the two can't mm -hmm. meet and it's hot where it hasn't been hot. And, cold where yeah I don't know it, it just what we're doing to the earth <laughs> it's a little mm -hmm. scary that one yeah. fire is just w wild like yeah the one down in New Mexico yeah yeah sad well it's a little after five does anybody have any questions about the knit along I don't want to I love chatting with people. You guys know it just fills me <laughs> up every day. I'm so excited mm -hmm. to talk to people. It's been lovely. I taught my last class at the library yesterday. I've been teaching for six weeks. So I did three beginning knitting and then three beyond beginning knitting. Janet, I did not make your friend love purling. Um, she did not like purling still, but <laughs> I gave it my best, best enthusiastic try. Thank but you her, for trying. She does cowl, not like to purl. Her cowl is turning out beautifully. And Good. there was only purling it in the first rows. And then she's doing a slip stitch. So there wasn't any. So she didn't have to practice after week one. <laughs> but so, yeah. So I just finished Beyond Beginning Knitting, where they make a cowl. The owl cowl, they can learn cables. Or the Malabrigo neck thingy, which is that's what it's called on Ravelry free pattern it's a slip stitch cowl quite pretty or they can make the spiral eyelet cowl which is a little lace pattern so my morning knitters all picked the malabrigo neck thingy because that's the easiest one my afternoon knitters were more experienced knitters and they picked the spiral eyelet and they were the only ones who didn't finish their cowls in the three weeks because they just wanted to check they signed up to be with their mom and their best friend and they just wanted to come to the library for two hours every Wednesday and talk and not do any knitting. <laughs> and I was like, I can't fix this. There's, there's no fixing for this. I felt kind of bad for your friends though, Janet, because those three ladies that signed up came together and they just 
they kind of dominated and kind of mm. chatted. You you can ask her if she felt, I think she's quiet anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think she would have, you know, been the person who would be constantly asking me questions. And they were very nice to her. They included her, but they were always talking about their own mm. stuff. I had to continue, continually try to say, okay, now I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> it was, yeah. So, and they didn't finish. And I was like, you got to turn your needles back in. So go home and finish and then bring them to the library. Cause that's the biggest issue with the library supplies is they got to turn their needles back in when they're done. And then we got to kind of. You teach a summer them. knitting class at the library? I'm not, I don't, I have never taught in the summer and they're not hiring me back for the fall. And I'm kind of oh. frustrated. <laughs> I almost always teach in the fall, but <clears throat> they got a new program director and she's really struggling. She's new and she was in the Hennepin County Library System, which is much bigger and fancier and m many more, you know, things. And she came to this one and she's just really struggling. And so I think the, her boss said to her, well, just don't, don't do as much. I don't, I don't know why they're not. I always teach in the fall and in the spring for them. And so now I reached out to Waconia. I called her today. And she's like, well, yeah, Linnea sent me a note. And then she's like, Corey, how many more. teaching things, how many teaching things do you have coming up? You have something in Ohio, right? Yeah, I'm going to South Dakota in September. I'm going to Ohio in November. I'm doing B Woolen and Stephen B in June and July. And I, I have a call from a Michigan person to do some type of a retreat. And I haven't, she hasn't reached back out. I've taught for her before at her fall retreat. Um, and I responded with, are you, are you asking because you want me to teach? And her response was yes. And then now I haven't heard from her. Yes. So, um, but she has a, a yarn shop in Michigan. We're at anyway. So, and then I'm already looking at next winter. Like I, I just bought my 2023 desk calendar. It came from Amazon in the mail and Ross said, what? And I said, I already have a date that I'm looking at. And I, we lay it all out on the desk in here. So he knows when I'm gone and when I'm not like, it's in my phone, but he needs to have a sense of, you know, where I'm traveling to and when I'm gone. So I just bought the 2023, which seems crazy, but Sweater camp is coming back to darn it anyway in Stillwater the first weekend in February. And I was like, I have to, I have to be able to look and see dates and stuff. So I bought the 2023, which is hard to believe because I'm we're only halfway through. You know how fast it goes though. Mm -hmm. Right? It just goes, everything goes super fast. Nobody has anything else? No questions? No, no anything that they need to know or whatever well i will Brad, put I, caught you. I just wanted to say hi yep <laughs> good i'm going to put out a new podcast on tuesday it should go up monday night i have a bunch of information to share um i will probably record it on monday i don't think i'll be back from south dakota oh it really depends on what happens down there but um i'll see when i come back and then i'll be putting that up on tuesday with new information Anybody you, listening to anything good on Audible? What are you listening to, Susan? I, I, I don't listen to Audible because I can't get my husband and son to shut up. Oh, you just read? <laughs> but I read a lot. So I just finished The Detective's Daughter. I really like that. And my husband just ordered me a book called Insomnia. It's a mystery. So we'll see how that is. And I also just bought the vines. Um, my career was as a church administrator and I had 250 books in my office when I retired and took the accounting home. Um, my son developed leukemia and I needed to retire so that I could be with him. And he's in remission. He's not well yet, but he is in remission. So that's a good thing. Um, but I still have the cutest little cubby at church and I do most of the accounting at home, but I still have a hundred books and members come in and get them. There's all sorts of friends that we read. So 
we all share back and forth and tell each other what we're reading. And it's a lot of fun. It, I just love it. So I've read many of the same things that you have read, and I love your suggestions. If you haven't followed Minsta Books, her name oh. is Mindy on Instagram. She has a lot of suggestions too. So cool. That's awesome. I'm doing um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And um, um, it's that's super a good popular. One. Tons of people have read it. Yep, yep. I just hadn't read it yet. It came, it came up in my Libby. And I don't know. I am how many? I have. I'm eight hours in and have eight hours to go. So it will be my whole trip to Sioux Falls tomorrow. My four hours in the car. Um, I will be listening. I didn't like it when I started it. I thought it was weird. I didn't know what was going on, and now I really like it. <laughs> Now I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. But the, the first part of it, I was like, oh, this is weird. She's going to live for 300 years, whatever, right? And now I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. So hmm. I am enjoying it. I'm going to interject really quickly and say, I'm so glad I got to see all of you guys today and I have to scoot. Um, but I hope you all have a good rest of your evening and so, Corey, safe travels to um, South Dakota. Thank nice you, meeting you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate and I'll it. be praying for those who need prayers. Okay. Thank you. I'll okay. say goodbye to everyone too. Wendy, we, our hearts are with you. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Yes. You have a safe trip. Yes. If you need anything, you're in Sioux Falls. Just give me a holler. Okay. Talk to you all, all later. Bye. It was nice Thanks to meet you all. Bye. Nice meeting you. Yes. Bye-bye.